SpaceX's ambition to expand the Starship program has existed since it was first unveiled as a conceptual design. Although there is still a tremendous amount of work to be done, SpaceX's Next Generation Spacecraft series demonstrates the company's relentless effort and incremental progress. With a second-gen Starship nearly finished and ready to go for launch, the Starship V3 has become the most anticipated development right now. Even before discussing the technical aspects, the appearance of Starship V3 is a highlight, standing out even in the conceptual phase. But why is that? Is the aesthetic appearance really that important? Yes. Beyond technical reliability, SpaceX also places significant emphasis on the visual appeal of their rockets. Leaving aside the bullet shaped, we can assess the beauty of these starships through how polished they are. Who could have imagined that the shiny reflective starship resembling a giant mirror once looked rough and unsophisticated? Well, if you are new to this, I hope you're not too disappointed by those early images. That was truly the early vision of SpaceX's starship. Compared to the current images, the difference is night and day. To achieve the sleek and polished look of today's Starship, and even the Starship V3 in the future where visible weld lines on the rocket might disappear entirely, SpaceX has had to improve and innovate continuously. Specifically, SpaceX has worked tirelessly to refine and upgrade the welding techniques for assembling the rocket sections. Welding is a crucial process for joining metal parts in rocket engines, which have to withstand extreme temperatures, pressures, and vibrations. However, this is not always easy as it depends on various factors such as welding methods, how good the welder actually is, and the different characteristic materials used in creating rockets. In the nascent stages of SpaceX's ambitious Starship rocket, welding emerged as a critical aspect fraught with a bunch of formidable challenges. The first reason for these difficulties lies in the materials used to build the Starship. At the inception of Starship's project, SpaceX envisioned a spacecraft crafted from lightweight carbon fiber. The potential of harnessing carbon fiber, renowned for its exceptional strength-to-weight ratio, seemed to herald a promising future for Starship. However, after an extensive research process, winds of change swept through SpaceX's vision. Although carbon fiber boasts light weightiness, it began to break down at around 200 degrees Celsius. Consequently, it would necessitate an exceedingly thick heat shield to withstand temps of 1,600 degrees during multiple re-entries. Ultimately, a momentous decision altered the course of the project. SpaceX opted to employ stainless steel, an economical material costing only $3 per kilo, in stark contrast to the carbons staggering $150 per kilogram. Despite being heavier, stainless steel boasted higher durability, capable of enduring three times the heat that carbon could withstand. Furthermore, the production of composite carbon materials requires meticulous layerings of fibers to create multi-directional strength followed by processing within immensely pressurized ovens. For components as big as Starship's 9-meter segments, SpaceX would need an oven bigger than anything on Earth right now. And this is where stainless steel shines. It can be swiftly joined together using basic and cost-effective methods. Thus, SpaceX embarked on creating the world's brightest rocket. However, for some reason, it didn't turn out to be so shiny. Due to the exceptional heat retention capabilities of stainless steel, it posed a challenge in the welding process, a pivotal component in space vehicle fabrication. Welding stainless steel demands a high level of expertise and precision, serving as a rigorous test of skill even for the most experienced welders. Furthermore, the inherent non-recoverable nature of the metal leaves no room for imperfections, eliminating any margin for error or subpar craftsmanship. This is why initially the welding process for Starship posed challenges for SpaceX due to their limited welding experience. The early Starship prototypes used a welding method called flux core arc welding. This technique uses the heat generated by an electric arc to melt the base metal in the welding area. The arc forms between the metal workpiece and a consumable filler wire that is continuously fed. As the wire and the metal workpiece melt, they merge together, creating a strong weld joint. In this process, a shielding gas, if used, protects the weld from oxidation. The gas is typically supplied from a high-pressure cylinder externally. Additionally, the flux melting forms a slag that shields the weld metal. This method, often called dual shield welding, was originally developed for structural steel welding. Common shielding gases include carbon dioxide or blends of argon and carbon dioxide, with a popular mix being 75% argon and 25% carbon dioxide. Dual shield welding is preferred for thicker materials or welding in non-standard positions. 
It offers welds with consistent mechanical properties and fewer defects compared to other methods. The continuous feeding of the tubular electrode also allows for faster production rates compared to solid wire or stick electrodes. While this technique has served as a foundation, it presented significant hurdles due to its limitations in producing precise and aesthetically pleasing wells. Compounding these challenges were the adverse effects of environmental factors on welding quality. Operating primarily outdoors within Boca Chica, SpaceX's makeshift facilities were vulnerable to the whims of nature, particularly relentless gusts of wind. And you surely remember that at the time SpaceX's factory was just really big tents. This was also confirmed by Elon. Our main issue here in Boca is that it can get very windy, which affects weld arc and steel melt pool. And so, with most of the welding being done outside by welders who had no rocket experience, it's no surprise that Starship looked this bad. The welds on the first Mark I prototype were heavily corroded with cracks and rough edges on the surface. In order to improve these welds, SpaceX started grinding them down until they were flush with the surface. In theory, each weld should be as strong as the surrounding metal. But the initial Starship test proved that it was not. Mark I exploded when one of the horizontal wells failed and sent the bulkhead flying. That's why the change is evident. SpaceX transitioned from flux core arc welding to the more complex tip TIG welding technique. Everyday astronaut in a tweet back in 2019 asked Elon, is there any substantial difference in welding manufacturing techniques between the bulkheads in MK1, MK2? Also, LOL. And Elon replied, almost everything's different. These parts are stamped versus manually bump form and tip TIG welded versus flux core higher precision, stronger joints, and 20% mass reduction. Since then, each ring was made from thinner single sheets of stainless steel, which required much less welding. In addition, the tip TIG welding method is a better solution. Unlike its predecessor, tip TIG welding offered enhanced control over the welding process, resulting in cleaner and more consistent welds. This precision was especially crucial when working with stainless steel, a material known for its unforgiving nature in displaying imperfections. By leveraging tip TIG welding, SpaceX engineers could achieve welds of unparalleled quality, meeting the rigorous standards demanded by the aerospace industry. Furthermore, the introduction of tip TIG welding ushered in a new era of efficiency and reliability in weld production. With its ability to deliver higher quality welds at a faster pace, tip TIG welding allowed SpaceX to streamline the manufacturing, accelerating the timeline for production. This increased efficiency not only optimized utilization of resources, but also saved money. In conjunction with the adoption of tip TIG welding, SpaceX also embraced the integration of laser welding for select sections of the Starship spacecraft. With laser welding, the heat is more concentrated and penetrates deeper into the metal, allowing ring segments to be welded in a single pass. However, to truly enhance the durability of each weld, an additional process is required. You see, when Starship stainless steel is manufactured at SpaceX's facility, it undergoes a process called cold rolling. This involves passing the metal through a series of rollers to compress and stretch the metal grains. This process makes the material harder and stronger, However, during welding, the heat softens the metal in that area again. And that's where SpaceX's massive planishing machines come into play. Planishing involves hammering the welds and compressing them until they match the hardness of their surrounding metal. This process also smooths the weld surface and improves their appearance. But will Starship ever achieve a perfectly mirror smooth surface? To answer that, we can look to Chicago and the famous bean sculpture. Made from multiple stainless steel plates, the structure underwent an eight-month-long polishing process involving a team of 24 people using different abrasives. To achieve this on Starship, the whole spacecraft would need to undergo a similar process to eliminate any visible lines around the welds. Could this be the appearance of Starship V3? Let's wait and see. SpaceX also employs another welding method for Starship and Super Heavy, creating a difference compared to other companies, and that's the friction stir welding FSW technique. FSW is a unique method of combining metals differing from conventional methods like gas or arc welding in that it's a solid-state welding technique and does not require either of the materials being combined to be melted. Instead, they are softened to the extent that they can penetrate each other's surface with a little help. This method produces exceptional mechanical properties such as fatigue strength and stiffness, as well as negligible defects in the weld region. Furthermore, this welding technique also reduces the wastage of materials and ensures an enhanced appearance 
with lower surface finishing requirements. Lastly, one of the most lauded benefits is that it doesn't have any harmful effects on the environment since toxic fumes are not produced in the complete process. SpaceX design engineers employed FSW to connect the breakoff fuel tanks in their rocket, which have a vital role in the propelling of the spacecraft after in their space and settles in orbit. The reason for this application was evidently the requirement of remarkable strength in breakoff fuel tanks of such a powerful rocket, which cannot be fulfilled by traditional methods like liquid state welding or non permanent joints like rivets. The evolution of welding techniques within SpaceX's Starship project has been marked by a deliberate and strategic shift in material selection profoundly influencing the quality, durability, and performance of the welds. Central to this evolution has been the transition from 301 stainless steel to 304L, a choice driven by the pursuit of superior weld strengths, enhanced corrosion resistance, and optimal performance under extreme conditions. Initially, SpaceX employed 301 stainless steel in Starship construction. While 301 stainless steel offers notable strength at elevated temperatures, its performance at cryogenic levels leave room for improvement. Cryogenic conditions are critical for exploration in space as spacecraft often encounter these extreme environments. The limitations of 301 stainless steel became apparent, particularly in its susceptibility to brittleness and reduced toughness at very low temperatures. Recognizing these challenges, SpaceX opted to replace the 301 with 304L stainless steel. This decision wasn't arbitrary, but rather a result of extensive research and testing. The benefits of 304L stainless steel are multifaceted. At cryogenic temps, specifically minus 196 Celsius, 304 stainless steel exhibits a 25% increase in toughness compared to regular 304 stainless steel. Moreover, the strength of 304 welds, four times greater than 301 welds at cryogenic temps, highlighted the material's superiority for such applications. By leveraging 304L's low carbon content, SpaceX effectively minimized the formation of chromium carbides during welding, a phenomenon that can lead to cracking and corrosion. This improvement significantly enhanced the reliability and longevity of welds in Starship structure. As SpaceX's confidence in the Starship design grows, the company continues to refine and streamline its manufacturing process. A pivotal aspect of this optimization is the reduction of the total number of welds required. Fewer welds would not only simplify the assembly process, but also minimize potential points of failure and reduce the time and resources needed for inspection and repair. This approach aligns with SpaceX's broader strategy of increasing efficiency while maintaining the highest standards of safety and performance. The transition to 304L stainless steel and the incorporation of advanced techniques such as cold rolling represents a significant leap forward in spacecraft construction. These innovations have allowed SpaceX to overcome the inherent challenges of welding and aerospace applications, ensuring that Starship remains robust, reliable, and ready for the rigors of space exploration. Today, Starship stands as a testament to the synergy between materials science and engineering ingenuity. Each weld and structural component reflects SpaceX's relentless commitment to pushing the boundaries of what is possible paving the way for humanity's journey to Mars. While the path to perfection is ongoing, the current iteration of Starship exemplifies a masterpiece of design and innovation, laying the foundation for the next generation of space exploration vehicles. That's all for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.